Hey, this is Patrick Mamelli from Pestilence, and you're watching and listening to Agoraphobic News. Hey, hey, Mills here of Agoraphobic News, this time with Mr. Patrick Mamelli of Pestilence. How are you? I'm fine. How about yourself? Fine, too. Good, good, good. And uh, last time you, uh, you've you been in Serbia in uh, 2014, right? In Belgrade. Yes, in Belgrade. That is uh, true. And I, I think that was a pretty good uh, show. And uh, we always love the hospita hospitality. And uh, this time it's... Uh, Feeling like it's we're just coming back home, so it's been amazing, and we have not even played yet, so it's cool. Yeah, awesome. And recently, uh, uh, you have an album out called uh, Hadion. Can you tell us something about uh, the new stuff? Well, the new stuff is uh, just, uh, I guess, more of the same of Pestilence. You know, it's uh, it's not a, a part two of anything. It's just like uh, a combination of everything that I've done in the past. Uh, 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 and I guess a little bit more simplified. So letting away of going a, a little bit away from the progressiveness of, uh, of uh, you know, the, the, the last two albums, I think. So it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more straightforward. It took you, uh, you guys so long to record an, a new album. I mean, it, it was like five years since the previous one. Well, it, it, not, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, that we've been uh, away uh, f uh, to record an album. Uh, the album was, um, you know, the songs, uh, within a year I can write a new album. So that's not it. It's just like finding the right people and uh, getting a good record label. And uh, it, once that was uh, finished and done, uh, we inked a deal and then uh, within a year all the songs were done and now here the new album comes out in March 5th. Okay, and uh, uh, this year it's like 30 years anniversary of uh, Maleus Maleficarum. So, uh, I think it's a test, uh, you mean uh, Consuming Impulse, you mean, right? I think, uh, I think the, uh, the Maleus Maleficarum was released in 1988. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was our first real album, and um, um, back then we were a little bit more influenced with, uh, you know, with thrash. And during the days when Sepultura was getting big and Creator and all these bands, so uh, we still have really fond memories of of that album. Although we have uh, progressed a lot, you know, since then. Yeah, but it's still, it's still, uh, you know, tonight we're going to play four songs, and uh, they're still difficult to play because uh, it's uh, high thrash standards. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Are you influenced by thrash metal bands when uh, writing these lyrics, or? Uh, no, I mean I, I'm not influenced by anything really. I don't listen to metal, and um, of course, back in the days we did listen to metal. Uh, that's why. Uh, let's say uh, Malayas and Consuming kind of sounds uh, you know like certain bands like we're influenced by Death, um, Infernal Majesty and stuff like that so we kind of um, after the those two albums we didn't want to go in that direction anymore and we started to uh, you know uh, create our own style I guess and with that new style comes of course uh, your own lyrics that are like more based on uh, reality what's happening nowadays in the world uh, that hasn't changed uh, although we touch sometimes religious subjects and and uh, anti things uh, anti church and stuff like that but we are not a, a, a gore band or a bloody uh, band or you know anything like that we try to approach a little bit more intelligent uh, you know uh, topics I guess what is the song systematic instruction about it's about uh, it's about hypnotizing um, um, soldiers and uh, and uh, people to go to war for you, so uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah awesome. And uh, what about consuming impulse? How important was that record for pestilence? Uh, that was the first. I guess that was the first time that we were actually uh, thinking of. Uh, what pestilence could be like and uh, trying to define your own style and sound and uh, we always wanted to be the European answer to death and uh, I think that album was kind of uh, setting the standard for us although we still listened too much to uh, to death metal at that time so that we didn't have a, 
totally our own style. It was developing still, but you know we still had a long way to go. And then uh, finally, with Testimony of the Ancients, I guess our most successful album uh, to date is. Uh, you now we started to actually create our own style, which is uh, what we're still doing now. Yeah, and can you uh, shell, uh, share a, sto a story about uh, Consuming Impulse uh, album cover? You know, there was a different version of it. Well, that was uh, the, our, our first encounter uh, with uh, with Roadrunner Records, where we thought, like, uh, well, those guys are really a bunch of idiots. <laughs> So uh, we had another album cover that kind of fitted, uh, you know, fitted the style and fitted the lyrics and everything, you know, consuming impulse. Uh, I don't, I don't understand why consuming impulse has anything to do with ants. I mean, they don't consume anything, but you know, whatever. So I don't, I don't get it. Um, they told me that uh, the album cover we had was too brutal for. Um, for the mainstream uh, American market, so um, and which we didn't care of anyways for any market. We just want to make good music, and and if it pick, gets picked up uh, because of our uh, uh, musical uh, and uh, creative integrity, uh, that that will be the you know the case. But you know since they took that away from us, and there was no communication whatsoever, and then it just was in the in the stores, and we're just like you know. Wow, w w how can you do that? Just uh, take the creativity away from a band. And uh, was it uh, that album is dirty sounding record? You know, was that intentional or? Well, it, uh, it, I had this little idea how to make it sound really, really dirty and uh, it hadn't been done before and uh, we just figured let's try it. And uh, it became a success. We put a flanger over both guitar signals throughout the whole album which is unheard of to do something like that so this sound is all over the album and it's not too dominant there but it makes the album sound really really dirty yeah and do you think that that album uh, had a huge impact on the swedish death metal scene because the bands like entombed and grave are more dirty dirty sounding than the when compared with, uh, let's say, Tampa, Florida sound. Well, I, I think I, I I don't think that w that those guys were influenced by 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 us or or whatever um, um, Florida death metal. Mm -hmm. I think that they wanted to define themselves, so they came up with that, you know, with their own raunchy sound sound, and it and it works for them. I works for for bands like Grave. I still like the the old demos, the 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 older grave and stuff like that, and and old entombed, uh, you know. But but as uh, time passes on, then you know you have to keep on exploring and f finding your your and reinventing your own style. But we always uh, were more into the Florida scene because I think that those bands were yeah. higher standards. Yeah. And uh, what about the Bay Area Thrash? Was it a big influence on you guys or? No, the only band that I can think of is Possessed that that was kind of a little bit in 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 our in our league. But uh, other than that, then uh, like I said before, I don't like to get influenced, so it's better not to listen to those bands at all. Yeah, and I forgot to ask you about Martin Van Duren. Uh What was it like to work with him? Because he sang on the first two albums, you know. Yeah, I mean, we, well, we can still keep on forgetting about Bar Martin Van Drunen. You know, that that question is. Uh, uh, you know, it, I, I can be politically correct or I can give you the insight, which I'm not going to do. So I'm just going to leave it to that. Uh, that's a reason why he's not in the band. And uh, yeah, that's about it. And uh, in 1991, you released one of the greatest death metal albums, Testament of the, of the Ancients. And uh, on the, that album, Tony Choi was playing bass. How did that happen? Well, um, we didn't have a bass player. Well, we didn't have a bass player since since uh, Malaeus and 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 consuming because Martin couldn't play the bass. So uh, I played the bass on those two albums. Uh, I'm not a bass player, so obviously you need you need a bass player. Uh, but I was going to do the bass parts again on uh, cons uh, oh, sorry on testimony and. Um, uh, we were hanging out at the Morrison Studios and there he was and uh, he offered his services and uh, um, back in the days he did stuff for free so that was a, <laughs> that was a biggie so and he wanted to do that and uh, I don't think that Kelly Schaefer was too happy 
with us and him yeah. at that point because uh, you know he, he left was, atheist. Yeah, he left AC atheist for pestilence and uh, of course I got blamed for it but <laughs> later on uh, you know we we had a nice chat and everything was fine again but um, yeah he, he he took over the base duties and uh, that's how that turned out you know the way it is and uh, how talented was uh, Tony I mean he's Tony, Tony Troy how talented is he uh, well, he he uh, he played bass on a on a bunch of albums. So uh, not just Pestilence, uh, but Atheist. Cynic, Atheist. yeah, and, and Cynic. I think uh, some of the, of some of his best work was with Cynic. Um, yeah, well, he's a well-known uh, name, you know, in the in the and a well-known artist. So uh, yeah, good. And uh, what were your aims for testimony testimony of the ancients, music-wise? Uh, well, the whole the whole idea behind that was like uh, you know try to uh, find a good combination between um, uh, sheer brutality uh, and and awesome death metal vocals with uh, combine it with uh, m melodic interludes and uh, just show showing uh, the world that you're able to create brutal music uh, and yet have a deeper understanding of music and. Um, try to come up with some melodies as well. So I think the combination uh, for, for that album really worked fine. Um, and those those little interludes and uh, in in those little intros, there was just like a little extra that we came up with w when we were recording the album. So it, that was not like uh, totally, uh, you know, premeditated s stuff, I guess. It just, it came, it came out like that when we were there. Yeah. In 1991, you toured with uh, Death, Napalm Death, Car uh, Cannibal Corpse, and uh, Dismember. Can you recall that? Yeah, that was in Germany. It was like a like a Christmas tour type of thing, you know. And it was the first big thing that that I thought was really well organized. And um, I, I thought those those were gr great times. Or the bigger bands were all together and. Uh, I still have good feelings uh, and fun feelings of of, of the, those moments because uh, yeah, it's still history. Sometimes in major magazines or whatever on the internet, uh, you know, some of the pictures pop up, and I'm like, wow, yeah, I was standing there with Barney and with uh, Chuck, which is uh, legendary, I guess. You know, not me, but those guys are legendary. So I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, were you influenced by Chuck Schuldiner? Um, not really. The only thing that I I always want to find out who I'm who I'm up up against. You know, let's say you, you, you if you're in a boxing match and you want to know who the other boxer is, then you find out what the guy does, right? So I thought that he was top of the bill in America, and I wanted to be the European answer to that. So, but without copying him or or sounding like him and even vocally not sounding like him. But as time progresses, I keep on sounding more and more like him, it, it seems. <laughs> and uh, do you consider uh, testimony, of the testimony of the Ancients as a technical death metal album? Does that label even mean something to you? No, I mean, it's like, you know, you can, you can be technical for the hell of it and, uh, and, and put 23 riffs and uh, with 10,000 tempo changes, does that make you technical? I, I think that the technical aspect lies within the, the, the ability to play your instrument to the best of your, uh, yeah, to the best of your ability. And uh, technicality just means technique. So if you play a, an instrument with a certain technique, it, it'll sound good. Uh, so um, it has nothing to do with intelligence, I guess. And what was like the golden year of death metal, 1991 or 1993? There, there's a lot of stuff released. And I think that it has to do a little bit with the uh, with the, the expectation uh, of the fans and the expectation of bands. Um, once they get inside that that whole circus of um, record companies and uh, and and um, and money and and. Uh, you know, people having different opinions about your music, and then you have to listen to these people. That kind of the the spontaneity goes away from it. So, I think that uh, the, the I think we should go even uh, uh, way back more in the past, where bands were just doing demos, and I think it was the purest form back then, when Death was, for example, Mantas and yet and yet Possessed coming up. Those were the golden uh, times, I guess. Awesome. And uh, in 1993, you released uh, Spheres' album. 
uh, which is like more uh, jazzy oriented with uh, these uh, guitar synthesizers. And what were your aims for that album? Uh, well, I don't, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to bust your bubble, but I think it really had to do with with us trying to get out of the record deal with Roadrunner and. Uh, as they wanted us to do a testimony of the ancients part two uh, which would have gotten us really really uh, into the league with where th those big bands are now uh, we just felt very unhappy with road uh, with roadrunner and road race because of the examples that i said before for example that they just changed the album cover uh, so we were not happy with those people at all and uh, the marketing uh, plan that they had for us so we thought if we make an album that is too far-fetched for them that they can't promote and uh, bring out, that they would drop us, and they and they did. So that's what happened. Yeah. yeah and, uh, what was the reception for that album um, among the fans? Um, there were just a few fans that uh, that kind of got into it, but most of the people that were hoping for Testimony Part Two, uh, they were, as I guess, uh, disillusioned, and they dropped us like a, like a bomb. You know, it's like. Record company dropped us and the fans as well. Nobody liked that album really, and they thought it sucked big time. I think same happened with Elements, Atheist Elements, or even Focus by Cynic, because the old school death metal fans don't get it. Yeah, it, it, I don't think it has to do with uh, not getting it. I think it has more to do with the fact that death metal has a, cer uh, a certain set of rules. Where you can move in, and if you if you go a little bit too far away from those rules, it just doesn't sound like death metal anymore. And I I truly can understand that. If you are closer to uh, to those rules, uh, you'll be more successful. And uh, but the thing is that I don't want to sound like uh, like an obituary or like uh, you know some of those bands that keep on producing the same music all over again, just with a just with a little bit of difference in the songs, but. Any album could be the same, and uh, Pestilence always tries to develop themselves and you know just aim a little bit higher than that. And there goes, and there lies the risk, because uh, you have to move, b b b you know, within these rules. And if you go too far away from the rules, it's not death metal anymore. So, with uh, Hey Dion, uh, I kind of went back to those rules. Go back to six string standard E tuning, uh, skank beats, uh, no blasts, you know, because. Yeah. We did, I mean, we already we did that. You know, we did that for a few albums, and uh, uh, people don't like it uh, in combination with Pestilence, which I can understand a little bit, I guess. And uh, uh, why? Did you, so you disbanded the Pestilence because of the record label and the grunge kicking in the scene. Well, not not the grunge because I, I I don't care for whatever scene it is. I if I if I make music, I make music the way I want to make music. But Roadrunner kind of destroyed the, the whole scene, and not just them, but other record companies as well, by going trying to go mainstream in death metal. You're just trying to you know uh, you know sign Sounds stupid. Sign, yeah, sign as many bands as you can, and then see who becomes uh, a favorite or popular, and then you know drop the rest you know and, and and there's too many there were just too many bands death metal bands at one point where you had the elitist like uh, you know is being flooded by 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 kind of crap bands that are getting a record deal and and you know flooding the scene with bullshit i guess i forgot to ask you what is like the lyrical concept of spheres well uh, it just stuff that kind of fits the um, fits the, the the imagination that comes with the lyrics and the music. So it was a little bit more, uh, you know, interstellar, like galactic, and we're already talking about multiple beings and stuff. Stuff that kind of comes back in uh, in Hey Dion right now. So um, all the pestilence lyrics have have always had like a little bit of a, a deeper meaning, and Marco was really good at that in creating just this atmosphere with the way of his. Uh, word choices were, I guess. Yeah, and, uh, what did you uh, do in the meantime when the pestilence was disbanded? Well, I just had a regular job and uh, just go to my job uh, from eight to five and uh, try to make a living. You know, I have kids, I have to pay the bills, and uh, you know, uh, I guess trying to be as normal as possible because you know, it, it, trying to make it in the music industry is very difficult, especially trying to make uh, money uh, with death metal. Could you pay the bills uh, from music, you know? 
Well, the, now that I'm signed to uh, Hammer uh, Heart, it's the first time that I'm making uh, money in 30 years. Awesome, man. Awesome. So, so Roadrunner still owes me 29 or 30 years of royalties and to the so you you didn't get any of the money no i mean we just we just got peanuts you know just to keep us happy but you know those peanuts were not hardly enough to 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 buy your golden tooth i guess uh, yeah. uh, but was that because of the bands were weren't reading cont contracts or you just signed the deal with the devil well as as most of the bands uh you're happy to get a contract and uh, later on when you start reading the contract for real then you know that you're being set up for yeah ripped off and then we broke that open and uh, still with the 12 12 percent that we we had we could not manage i could not pay my guys and it's just like it was the worst you know and the only people that benefited from from pestilence was the record label really yeah. and in uh, 2009 uh Pestilence was back with Resurrection Macabre. Macabre. So, uh, what, how did that happen? Uh, I guess that, that 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 the blood just crawls where it uh, where it wants to go. So, uh, after a long time of uh, silence, uh, we just got back and recorded uh, Resurrection with again with Tony Choi on uh, on bass, and then we had um, Peter Wildewer on drums, which was a good combination. But you know, of course. Uh, those people have their own bands and this is just like a project to them so after that album was done and we toured for that it was over again and, uh, in 2011 you released the Doctrine album so uh, is that a concept album or yeah it was more a, uh, a concept album about um, uh, the concept of uh, manipulation and uh, that's where our uh, sign comes from we have this seal called uh, uh, in manipulation we trust and uh, and that's about uh, humanity uh, losing faith in the stuff that they should be uh, putting their faith into and uh, kind of losing uh, losing their grip on reality and that was uh, what that album was all about the obsidio obsidio is a little bit more of a contrast to that with david haley on drums and uh, Georg Meyer on bass and um, we were getting better and better uh, with every album and I guess that um, Obsidé is our most brutal album uh, there's hardly any melody in there it's totally atonal and the, and the leads everything is just kinda kinda sick and twisted and this is like uh, the opening to uh, what Hey Dion is now so it was getting into more the esoteric uh, stuff uh, about uh, things, about illnesses, uh, emotional distress and stuff like that. I forgot to ask you, uh, does the name Pestilence have something to do with creator song play, uh, of the same name? Uh, no, that's just a coincidence uh, that they have the song called The Pestilence and uh, we were formed around 86 and um, that came a little bit later, I think. That album, I, I, I October '86 or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Well, so that was that was really, really close. Then you know, it's a, no, that's a coincidence, really. But it, I think that that name really uh, fits fits our style, you know, because uh, yeah, because of the the way the way the music is, uh, you know, being uh, being put out and. Uh, and it's like you know, Pestilence is getting uh, it's getting uh, bigger and better again. And with every album, uh, you know, we sound better, and we're getting bigger and bigger. Like uh, you know, it it fits. It just is a very strong name, and it fits uh, fits our style really. Yeah. And uh, can you tell me something about your guitar equipment? Uh, well, I change guitar equipment uh, so often that I I don't know where to start. I, I you know of course I start with the uh, with the Marshalls and then I started to, to incorporate uh, <coughs> different distortion pedals to get the, the sound that I want. And then I started stacking amps, uh, try combinations of Mesa Boogie and then Angle or Angle and uh, Marshall or or you know any combination that works for me. Uh, then I started using modeling amps uh, from Line 6 to um, uh, Studio Devil or whatever. And now we are currently talking to uh, Fractal Audio, see if we can work out a deal. But I think that, you know, it, it's like a never-ending, never-ending um, 
story about finding the right the right tone and and uh, brutality. Um, also, now we are talking to uh, Ignite Amps from Rome, Italy, and uh, which is a very good uh, has a good chance of uh, you know becoming uh, the next amp uh, amp uh, for us. Do you have some last words for the fans? Well, you mean for the the Serbian fans here? Around the globe. Around the globe. Well, yeah. Uh, well, the the thing is that um, we always play with our hearts. We have always played with our hearts, and we always followed our hearts. And we never. Everything we do is uh, is from the heart, and we never uh, we never try to be something that we are not. We're always really true to ourselves, and we hope that this trueness to the fans and to the scene uh, will keep. Uh, keep the, the love for pestilence alive and uh, the interest in us and um, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm here to stay and I hope uh, that you know when I'm 55 or 65 75 I'm still doing this you know because uh, for the love of the, the the art form that is death metal okay thank you for your time man